月が空に張り付いてら金髪の星が揺れてら誰もがポケットの中に You know, you look at this title and you think, man, I'm going to get arrested for watching this, quite frankly. It, and, I, and that's obviously the author's intent. You're, you're looking at this title and going, nah. But only to be greeted by one of the most wholesome and wonderful anime I've watched in a long time. You know what? Well played. Well, yeah. well played. Yeah, well, it, well played. It's weird, isn't it? Because you go yeah. in, it, it, for a series that is predicated around having multiple women loving a dorky, not dorky, no, down on his luck dude, who for once is in the workplace instead of high school. It's yeah, a it's nice average change dude. up. It is a nice change up in that regard. Um, we, I, I can tell at the gate we're going to have some differences of opinions, so get excited. But for those just tuning in who weren't paying attention at the end of the last episode, this week we are reviewing Higehiro. Uh, after being rejected, I shaved and took in a high school runaway. A 2021 anime from the spring season. Yep. Brand new, and welcome to Anime Roulette as always. My name's Pac-Man. And I'm V. Is, yep, Ivy, <laughs> V, the man. The man who is angry all of the time, who has a bit of a cough recently. Don't worry, it's not the Rona, but uh, his yeah, immune no, system. Yeah, no, classic, classic me, right? Like, everyone's catching the Rona, and then there's out me out here like, yeah, I caught bronchitis again. Including yeah. me, by the way. My dad has the Rona, so if I disappear for two weeks, you'll know why. Um, although when the time this comes out, I'll probably be over the Rona or dead. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. By the way, can we just give a shout out to the people in the comments who haven't figured out that we're recording these in like severe advance of when we release them? We yes, had a few well, comments recently that were like, hold on. Didn't Pac-Man pass like 40,000 subs recently? Why are they talking about 30,000? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're caught out. We bank these up. And the truth is, sometimes... We go through uh, we go through anime really quickly, and so we record an episode and then record another one just to make sure that we've always got an episode out on time every two weeks. Yeah. Um, and in case apart if from that we, one time. <laughs> yeah, apart from that one time, um, the other one is of course every now and then we get a show that drags and takes ages to watch, which ironically enough, despite its quality, this one was. Um, yeah, I this think. one took a bit longer than some of the others. Like I think the qu the quickest we've watched shows so far were what. Millionaire Detective, we watched that in, like, what, one and a half sessions? Yeah, uh, um, we watched Gate Adi in, like, yeah, three days. Gate in three days, and Adi Hureta, we both, like, blitzed that one. Yeah, I mean, Adi Hureta had this wonderful junk food popcorn quality, so I just kind of went with that, right? It was pretty damn good, but this show took a long time so what so like why okay so let's talk about the show so yep higahiro i shaved and took in a teenage runaway a... it's literally in the title it's in the title it's, it's a i'm so excited we finally got a zero i mean i guess i already heard it but like more than other series this series literally tells us what it's in is in the title right yeah and not only that for the first time ever on this podcast like we've had good shows like Samurai Champloo, but I think for the first time on this podcast, I think we've actually finally got an anime that I think is properly classed as like a great anime. Because prior like, yeah, that's kind of a spoiler for the whole discussion, but on overall, like when you get Samurai Champloo, the problem is it comes with the baggage of the fact that it's by Watanabe, right? Mm. And it's coming off the back of Cowboy Bebop, and he's just renowned for that cool music-themed style and that excellent classic animation. It's a classic, so it comes with all the baggage of a classic show, right? This anime, for the first time on this podcast, we have rolled a contemporary modern anime that is great. Like, actually, just not just good, great. So, what's it about? Well, as I said, it says exactly what it is on the tin. 
We have a young teenage girl named Sayu who is run away from home due to domestic issues of a, well, let's be blunt, mummy issues of the not good kind, the very Shaking severely bad up. kind. Shaking things up. With... Shaking things up. For once, it's not the dad being a deadbeat. This time it's the mum being a shithead. Well, dad is a deadbeat. Dad abandoned them, but mum tried to baby trap dad. Good point. And good point. Mum, mum tried to baby trap, tra baby trap her dad, and then when it didn't work, um, she basically had to look after a kid she did not love and blamed for her father's divorce. Right. Very cool and normal. Like behavior very here. cool, normal, cool and normal behavior from mum. But like, honestly. This is, we're past 30 seconds now, this is honestly one of the most fucked up backstories for any anime character I've seen in a while. Like, we've had, you know, tragic murder of their parents, or isekai and sent into a world where all her friends are dead, or whatever. We've had all these different tragedies. But this one, like, Sayu sets the new benchmark for fucked up life Olympics, and both of us in real life can talk about the fucked up life olympics because both of us have had pretty shit ones um relatively yeah, this speaking is, uh, this is definitely <laughs> up there with uh shitty parent things um yeah i probably wouldn't go quite as far as pack is here but um it's definitely not a particularly great origin and like as the story goes on we slowly have it like spelled out to us what happened to sayu and why she went to such lengths to avoid her family um yeah I mean, which... spoiler alert, which we've already spoiled a lot of it, but spoiler alert is the big... You know this podcast by now if you're watching, but if you're a new viewer, hi, go watch the others, but hi. Uh, <laughs> hi. This is a spoiler-filled review of... Obviously, if it's a podcast that goes for an hour and a half, it obviously is, but now we're going to... Consider this the official spoiler warning, the minor stuff. We spoiled some of the main plot, but now the major stuff. Sayu's trauma is, like, on another level. She is run away from home because of her domestically abusive mother who only gave birth to her to try and baby trap her dad who despite being a deadbeat in an absolute sigma male move did not accept the terms and conditions and just ran off with his mistress anyway like if you're gonna be a piece of shit at least own it and he owned it so good on him we don't even see him in the anime i feel like <laughs> we've seen a lot of plots involving abortions recently like we what I got a uh, pack to watch uh, Jujutsu Kaisen with me, and obviously there's the plot with the uh, cursed spirits there, yeah. which involves like mass abortions. Um, there's also the plot here where the father tries to get the mother to abort Sayu, um, and then there was also the like uh, multimedia project that I love. Uh, Milgram also has abortions. Jap Japan seems to have abortions on the mind in the cultural consciousness right now. And they're um, trying to stop it because they've got a people shortage. <laughs> <laughs> I so love much... it. I love it. It's not even like a moral argument, like you know, like the American, British, uh, like Australian anti-abortion lobby. It's literally, please stop. We need more people. <laughs> we like it, it. Got to the point where um, it got to the point like completely off topic, but like there is a whole bunch of like half Japanese, half Brazilian <laughs> people because they got all of these highly energetic in the uh in the nocturnal activity department <laughs> people to come over and all these women see these very attractive brazilian young men they do their job for king and country or emperor and country and now you've got all of these mixed race japanese kids and then japan's government again being cool and normal then kick them all out again. truly an interesting uh behavior uh, um but we can't get too off topic here, otherwise we'll never no, be but, here forever. But long story short, this is one of those cases where, like, Sayu's backstory, and then th there's all the other stuff that comes with it. Um, she's raised in a household where nobody loves her except her big brother, and her big brother's always busy trying to live up to the family reputation because their family is very wealthy. And so mum loves him and showers all her adoration on her son. And at the same time also puts the pressure of him to carry the family forward. So Sayu gets shat on and has no social development. She doesn't have friends. She doesn't go on holidays. She doesn't have all the normal experiences that all of us got as kids, right? And then fast forward to high school. She finally makes a friend. 
who likes her because she's really pretty and really cool. Um, but because her friend is really nerdy and awkward, they sort of form the Losers Club, as it were, um, to steal a Stephen King reference. But they form the Losers Club uh, of party of two who are two awkward kids hanging out. But because Sayu is really attractive and really pretty, which is actually a plot point, she rejects the jocks. She rejects one of the jocks and all the girls who like the jocks um, start bullying her friend because they can't get away with bullying Sayu because the boys all like her and they'll seem like bitches. But they can bully the awkward nerdy girl who is friends with her. And because of that, Sayu decides, fuck that noise because Sayu is a very good person and challenges them and fights them and protects her only to find out that her best friend loves her because she was so kind and and shy and friendly to her and that by Sayu spending all her time fighting to protect her, she feels guilty and feels like she's ruining Sayu's life and um, commits the unalive community guidelines strike. Hello. Hmm. Um, does yeah. the unaliving does a acrobatic fucking pirouette off the mortal coil if you will uh yeah in in absolutely epic fashion with a complete tear-filled goodbye and everything so watching her watching her friend do the uh do the uh concrete tango right in front of her uh so she literally watches it happen and and looks over the railing and sees it in front of her gets traumatized goes home and the press is at her house because the Japanese press and paparazzi are actually ridiculous. Like, ours are pretty bad, but theirs are insane. Yeah, right? admittedly, I think that this was situ Like, given the context of this situation, I feel like they even, like, in the context of this, I absolutely have no doubt that this would happen. Like, I would not put this past someone, like, to date at night, right? Like... Yeah, right, 100%. And, like, because she's the heiress and daughter to, like, a massive company in Hokkaido... Like they live in in Sapporo area, so you know they are a big name in the north of Japan, and so everyone's there and like, hey, your daughter's been involved in a high profile unaliving incident, a self termination incident, shall we call it, at the high school. Her best friend did the unaliving. What what do you have to say about this? Can we get a comment? And because of this, her mum instead of helping her daughter grieve and gave over the fact that her best friend is gone and she blames herself for it, her mother straight up accuses her of murdering her. Essentially. Like, you did all this to cause me trouble and to bring harm on the family name. What, did you kill her? Did you do this? Are you responsible? You might as well have, given the press presence outside. Sayu, quite naturally, finally loses it and goes on a adventure thanks to her brother. Her brother is a good like her brother's like a bro like he's a good he is a he is a literal bro and an actual bro like he uses his wealth and position to give sayu a crap load of money and says hey go rent a hotel a five-star hotel in sapporo for a week or two chill out have a good time get it out of your system and then come back all right and we'll sort it out sayu quite reasonably in my opinion says fuck mum absolutely no way am i going back to that house i'm running away and i'm making a stand and so she runs off and goes on an adventure all the way down the spine of japan through hokkaido onto honshu heading towards tokyo she runs out of money halfway and well there's no way about it she resorts to prostituting herself to young men in order to survive yeah. Until until eventually one night she runs across one of the best boys I have seen in anime in years. Yoshida. 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 Yoshida, Yoshida. This guy's awesome. Ivy, you I've been talking for a bit. Your take. This man uh, is So I re <laughs> Okay, this is where we're gonna differ. So I do like Yoshida and I do like him as a character, but it's very clear to me that the author couldn't land on what he wanted Yoshida to be, right? Like, the driving narrative of this story is the relationship between Sayu and Yoshida. Sometimes it's romantic, sometimes it's familial. And, like, the author can't seem to make up his mind about what he wants. And this is the... <sighs> Less so than Osagi drop, right? 
but like yeah. this is very much territory that like for me i am like oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy i don't and i know that pack is with me on this that we don't like yoshida and sayu as a couple oh i'm 100 percent no like but I, <laughs> I i'm gonna disagree with you on that i think because because of Sayu's situation, and it goes into this in detail, where she felt that giving boys sex in expl- in exchange for a place to stay felt like validation and she felt required and needed. So she felt that attachment to men when she was being, um, well, you guys know the word, community guidelines. Because um, <laughs> that's what it was. It's It wasn't even... A, it wasn't even prostitution it was the the community guidelines word and it's exploitation right um but she felt validated and needed by that and a lot of women do feel that way in situations even in relationships a lot of women do feel obligated a lot of the time and psychologically that really hurts Sayu. so i can understand i can understand where the author was going with Sayu from that because Sayu suddenly meets yoshida and yoshida likes older women (laughs) and he got rejected by the main what i would consider the main and only real romantic partner in the series look look, no i'm sorry goto-san is better like peak boo Um, justice for yuzaha no no wrong incorrect (laughs) incorrect team goto all the way justice for yuzaha look Uh, Plucky Kohais are great. I love Plucky Kohais as much as the, as the next man, but they're but Plucky Kohais are for our uh, wingmen slash wing women who go out of their way to be your backup in tough spots, and she is. She's very good at that. Plucky Kohais are not the romantic interest. The romantic interests are the experienced seductive senpais and Team Goto, all the way. Anyway, not the topic. Point is, Yoshida from the get go acknowledges the fact that Sayu is very attractive and that's how she's been managing to get where she is. And he is honest with her when she confronts him about the issue. She is honest with him that she finds him attractive and she also finds that sex is validating for her. And she confronts him about that. And Yoshida is very open with her and says, look, I think you're cute. And I, any man in his position any man at all really would find a very attractive young woman showing herself off to him saying let's go at it but at the same time he is the bigger dude he he knows that it would be wrong it would be exploitative and he's into older women and he has someone he likes anyway and he will not take advantage of her but i think I, I think I see what you mean about the, the criticism. You, the author kind of leans into wanting Sayu and Yoshida to be a thing. And he kind of says, no, that he doesn't want them to be a thing. I think the he, best I, quote here I can use is from the author himself. Higehiro is a story about criminal activity. Make no doubt about it. And that's what we're dealing with. Because of yeah. the way Japan's laws work, she is not an emancipated, she is not like a minor who is like recognized as being independent right he is essentially engaging in by japanese law kidnapping right that's just how japanese law functions and like you can get like it doesn't matter about the moralistic aspect of it right we're not the kind of people who are going to be like oh well the law says because i am fully aware there are situations where people need to get the fuck out of those like you need to get the fuck out and you need to run and i completely understand Sayu's sentiment here she is in an abusive household her mother is treating her and like absolute garbage and her brother while is being supportive is not doing it he is essentially only a little bit older than her right he's still he, 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 look i want to modify my statement he is a bro but that man the f- like he he acknowledges it himself at the end of the series yoshida got on his knees, travels all the way up to Hokkaido, goes the nth yard, not only not only that, but looks after Sayu for almost a year, basically. He does all of that, and her big brother doesn't do a third of what Yoshida-san does for Sayu's safety. 
and that uh, is his biggest problem like this whole situation could have been avoided if sayu's brother had stuck up for her more like he sticks up for a yeah but he could have confronted mum out the gate straight up he could have taken the fight to mum straight out the gate he really should have but at the same time because of how families work in japan and japanese culture and his position in the family and so on he obviously thought it was not the right thing to do again even if it is incidental or accidental in this case i've noticed that in a lot of manga especially in this sort of area there is a distinct anti-rich family undercurrent in anime of recent years um, like it really is starting to get there but like her brother does not stick up for her the way he should and like it it's a big failing of his that he admits to later but yeah, I, man, this show is so complicated. Like, my feelings here, man, like, <laughs> this isn't like, like, okay, so take a show, like, that we've covered before. Take Yudin Chan. I outright despise Yudin Chan, right? It is disgusting yeah. on a moral level to me. I don't care about separating fiction from reality on a moral level. I am disgusted by its, like, just basic levels, right? Yeah, it's fucked. You and can't fuck. And here, I'm... It's not that I'm... Like, I don't think this is... <sighs> I'm really struggling. I don't think this is necessarily, like the worst or anything and i don't think the writing is necessarily terrible although i have a lot to say about the writing of the cast itself like characterization uh like yeah. character writing um but the core story bothers me a lot right um so let's like let's let's i'm just gonna place this out right and so we have Okay, so we have him... Uh, Yoshida takes in Sayu, and they form this weird sort of familial but also romantic and sexual tension, like, deal going on. And Sayu continues to serve as a fan service object throughout the show, right? Yeah. And that bothers me. I don't like... Like, <laughs> the show can't make up its mind about what it wants, right? It condemns the people who took advantage of Sayu for, you know, like, they, there is nothing consensual about what Sayu went through with these men, no. right? It's, no. it's, it, it is coercion and it is, like, you can cut. There you go. There's a bleep you have to put oh, in. Oh, bugger. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> that, damn it. <laughs> um. He said but, the word, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. But like, okay, so like getting back on track. So the situation that she goes through is exceptionally non-consensual, right? She's basically in a situation where she is put into it and it is a very negative, hostile situation and she doesn't really have a whole lot of control over what is going on, right? Not at all, no. Fuck all, no. And throughout the show it compete it hammers at home the people who slept with her are bad they're doing the wrong thing they're doing the wrong thing they're doing the wrong thing yeah but and the dude who the dude who like slept with her before the co-worker straight up tries to uh R -word oh, word again. her like, yeah again straight up again and yoshida like honestly <sighs> yoshida at that point like he makes a big deal of being controlled i'm an adult i'm in control no, mate, for once in your fucking life, I think this is a perfectly reasonable time to slug this prick straight in the face. I would have done. Almost certainly. If it was me in his position, that boy would have been going over that balcony, most probably. Right? And, like, but this this is this is what I'm talking about. So we're shown that these people are bad people for, you know, having these like desires that they force upon Sayu. But we as an audience are forced to have those same impulses. They repeatedly over-sexualize Sayu. And we as an audience are dragged along with that. It's okay for Yoshida and us, the audience, to, like, perv on her. But... When I think back to the show, though, there's only really one instance where they do. Which is the instance where she gets into her underwear. 
Yeah, it's the <laughs> only real time I've I think that you could even consider it, and even then it was contextual in the scene. I was actually going to say the opposite to you. For a show of this type, Sayu in her costume, like her like not costume, like in her character design, she's always in her uni her school uniform, in a tracksuit, or just casual clothes, or in her work uniform. We never really see Sayu in any other sort of outfit except during the scene where she is being assaulted or the scene where she confronts Yoshida about his feelings and whether he's <laughs> romantically and physically interested in her. But Which I again think... is like uh, uh, of the rest of the time, like there is no incongruous beach episode. There's none of this sort of thing. Like it literally just. That's like... because they cut so much material. So okay. So just quickly for reference. Um, so we adapted from instead of adapting from the manga, we adapted from the uh, the light novel, right? Yeah. Um. So they adapted five volumes of light novel into thirteen episodes, which is they <sighs> cut an entire character out of the show. I'm not joking. The sen, you know, the senpai that they introduced very briefly. Yeah. And then she made that little feature in episode thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. She's actually got a role to play in the light novel and in the manga. Uh, but she got completely cut for time here. Um, yeah. But the, like, what my what my problem is, and we've talked about this before on the show, but like something that really bothers me is when, like whenever there's like a scene, and this was something I've like criticized Sword Art Online for, is when you have these like non consensual scenes for like shock value, right? Like with the coworker. Also, yeah. he gets off so lightly, like the fact that he's just sort of oh, accepted bro. into their their friend group. Like, fuck no, dude. That's the that's the only major story complaint I have with this show is the fact that <laughs> that dude was let anywhere near Sayu. If I was Yoshida in his position after seeing that, I would I would have the Kombini manager sack him for one. Two, I would have been probably, I would. Like, I would almost certainly have gotten charged for assault for what I would do to that kid. If I walked in on a guy, obviously assaulting what is really, relationship-wise, his little sister, basically, in this sort of circumstance. And, and while they try to play it off as the anime kind, in a several scenes, like you say, Ivy. It is the actual little. Well, it's kind. also it also is important to remember that the canon ending of Higehiro is that Yoshida and Sayu end up dating. Yeah, and which, the, but like, sorry, I just want to <laughs> I want to catch this before we move on because that is a, another discussion to have. Is Sayu in that scene with the coworker is being sexualized during a scene of non-consent, and this is something that always happens in like. It's it, not just the, it, in every it, anime. It, that's that's what it. I mean. Like, this is a broad criticism. This isn't me picking, like, a just a fight with Higehiro. It is a, it's a big problem, right? Uh, it was a problem in Sword Art Online repeatedly. It was a problem here. It's a problem everywhere it crops up. And I feel like it really undercuts the message when you're like, oh, look how awful this is. Also here have a panty shot and it's like no it, like, it it could be like like you could if you were sort of going the sort of film noir route like it could be the sort of breaking the fourth wall sort of self-critique sense like ah uh, you're just as bad as these people <laughs> the only problem is it's not that sort of show so it doesn't work it literally no. is and yeah but as i said like i guess maybe i'm just desensitized and i'm more of a degenerate than you are like, I didn't, like, because I'm used to pure degeneracy, this didn't set off my degeneracy radar. I was too busy being furious to notice the panty shots. So maybe it just but went this, under my I guess radar. This is why I'm here, right? I'm the one who picks up. The, this is why I bring I bring the discourse. I bring the discourse. He brings the discourse. But in this and... case, I, I'm, I'm disagreeing with a completely different reason. Well, I guess quasi agreeing with you in a way is that Nah, homie, like, if I, like, that's my biggest problem with Yoshida. He he makes this big argument, and it's a big plot point in the end when he confronts her mother, like, of being, 
the bigger man. There are several circumstances where Yoshida should have just manned up and socked the person he was talking to. Or, in the case of his kohai, should have been, not socked them, because that's domestic violence against women, but, like, verbally and firmly said, no, this is not cool. Yeah. Right? Like, Yoshida, like, it's a part of his character that he's spineless and he's indecisive. It's part of his character and played in. But it really, like, for a guy with that level of moral center, because the whole thing is he's so drunk, he's drunk as hell at the start, which is when he meets Sayu. And he has incredible self-control and self-will to go like, look, I'm not going to, you're a kid. I'm going to take you in because I'm a good person. Make me so soup and tuck yourself into bed and be ki- and be chill. I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to hurt you. Just go and be a kid like that's what you're for right he is obviously a good person with a strong moral center the fact that he doesn't drop kick that kid the moment he opens the door sayu and him have been together like in their apartment for like several months at this stage and like they are family at this point like they really they are starting to become a family at this point and the fact and the fact that the moment he sees his basically his best friend and companion and family member getting sexually assaulted by some piece of shit, he should have drop kicked that. <laughs> yep, yeah, gonna have to bleep that yep, one. Yep, that's another bleep. That's another uh, bleep. But he, he should have drop kicked him over the balcony. Like, no, like, if I walked in on someone treating one of my family members like that, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I would it... be arrested. <laughs> okay, like, not happening, man. Not ha- I think I'm trying to think about this in a way because like core concept wise I find that I find Yoshida to be boring yeah I find Yoshida as a character like he is is the bar so low right is the bar so low that this is what quantifies, like, a really good dude? Yeah, and the sad truth is, actually, I think one thing that this anime does make a really good point of making is that, yeah, at least in my experience, yeah, this is the bar of a good dude. The bar is in the bar is in the, uh, it no, is in the, the Mariana ball. Trench. The bar is like, in the Mariana Trench. Like, while well, we won't go into it because our personal lives, obviously... I think we can both agree that when we were younger, both of us were really shit people in in different parts of our lives. We were really shitty. I was. I yeah. Know you were I mean, I I had I had my moments of shittiness. I was. Yeah. A, you know, I I had some fun experiences like being in a cult. So yeah, you know, we've all been yeah, there. We've been. Shitty. I, have, I have made I have made questionable advances in my younger days on on ladies. Like that's that's something I have to be honest about. I said no details, but I like we like a lot of men have done some really shitty things in this area, right? But at the same time, Yoshida is twenty eight, right? He should know fucking better a lot of the time. Yeah, and and like the fact that, and I would think that I think that's like, what in regards to like there's certain moments where it feels like that it, it feels really like its audience like. It's us being told that Yoshida is a good dude, right? Yeah. Um, like, for example, like, the times when, like, Sayu will get into his bed with him. It's like, no, that's, sh- like, if, if Yoshida is this really, like, virtuous moral guy that we're being told that he is, he should literally, on the spot, be like, no, get out of the bed. Like, just straight up, get out. <laughs> like, and, and I think that's why, like, I think on that, like, a little bit of that level, it doesn't quite hit. For me right <laughs> i think the reason why it why this show worked for me is that initially i had a, a bit of like a bit of trouble like with this show and the way it's proportioned out because all of the heavy duty plot points we've discussed come to light later because that's the big reveal of the show right but at the start, with that awkward bit where the author isn't, and yes, canon, like with Yusuke Drop, freaking annoying, in canon in the light novel and shit, 
they get together in the end, which I'm I mean, the light about. novel, yeah, the light novel, like, is the strictly speaking, the light novels thing is like open ended. It's exactly the same as the anime. You know, they meet up after all the time has passed. Blah 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 blah. Um, but uh, what I think, yeah, like it, it, it's one of those things where you're just sort of left like questioning because the the. Se- <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say this very carefully, given how politically charged this is right now. Do you believe that what, given the canonical ending, the author statements, and what we see occur, do you believe this could be classed as child grooming? Um, it's iffy. Yeah. Like, because cause you see, the thing is, I think what, like, I think what gets me about it, right? That's my problem with it is the open-ended nature is that that's my biggest issue. The fact that it's left potentially that they could get together. I would have preferred the ending of Bin that Sayu becomes like a stepdaughter that moves to Tokyo to pursue her career in engineering or whatever she wants to do. And she lives in 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 the and that she lives in a in a townhouse with yoshida and goto who are now happily together right yeah or even in your case like the kohai and him are together right yeah like i would have preferred that ending because my biggest the reason why i think this show worked for me particular is that yoshida and sayu at around the five to six episode mark become a like teenage Family, daughter yeah, and stepdad right? yeah that like and see that 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 that, that aspect that... i am here for right i love found family as a trope i love the idea that like you are not necessarily con- like just because you are not connected by blood does not mean that you cannot be family right there are people to this day that I will, if they called me up, it could be two o'clock in the morning. They could be like, I need you to drive across Australia and come help me do some shit. I would fucking do it. Right. I would do that shit in an instant. I wouldn't even do that for my fucking dad, but I do it for some of these guys. And found family. Like the people that asked me to do that, I'd have to fly to freaking Texas. And that's a pain (laughs) now. (laughs) I'd like, and this is the thing. This is the thing at the end of the day is, Found family is incredibly powerful because I think all of us can relate to the fact that, like, not always will your family, just because you're related by blood, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily either A, on good terms with them, or B, really in a familial relationship with it. Yep. And... And it's one of those things that really, like, can get disjointed because when you think about it, this whole show could could have and this is what my problem is yeah okay yeah i've really clearly got it right from the get-go we have this awkward relationship between the two and this is a really important thing children are allowed to like kids in their teen years will often crush on adults yep this is a thing that happens i went through it you know other people go through it we see adults and they're like mature they're they're everything we want to be and everything we want to be with we talked about this in the last episode with gate yeah (laughs) it is on you as an adult to ensure this does not happen you are the one who must step in and say no not a chance absolutely not put your foot down and yoshida (sighs) he does do that he does but the problem is is that like there's so many times where this show could have just moved into being a family narrative, right? Like, of them becoming more family than her actual family. And I feel like it, because of the author's lack of commitment to the fundamental question of this, right? Because he, he still wants to do the will they, won't they with Sayu and Yoshida. He also wants the harem aspect with, like, you know, uh, Ghetto, uh, Goto, and uh, the Kohai, whose name I have forgotten, even though two seconds ago I was Yuzahara being like defender. Yuzahara, or whatever. Yeah, uh, Yuzahara Mishima. Uh, and, <laughs> sorry, 
that I think is why I think it's to me overall this falls flat, right? Having like, and I think it's one of the points where the show did shine during the final conf- the big confrontation with the mother, is hammering home that. But then again, the show can't commit to it because it doesn't want to do that. It wants to also be the romance, right? The complicated romance story. And yeah. I feel like that does not land. And okay, look, I will not hide that I am biased. I don't like age gap at the best of time, like big age gap, especially, right? There's like at least 11 years between these two, right? Yep. Sayu is like 15, 16 years old and Yoshida is He's between 16. 26 and 28. Yeah. Okay. So 16 and like 20, 26, 28, right? Yeah. Um, That is a full 10 years. That is a big age gap with adults right like if an 18 year old is dating a 28 year old that's a big age gap in the first place but a legal one right there's nothing there's no laws that say you can't do that that is absolutely legal but the dynamic like but but you think about it yeah you think about it now like honestly guys in the chat like morally questionable though it is like if a hot 18 year old model said oh you about it i mean yeah maybe you know, in terms of, like, the pure physical aspect, but, like, in terms of relationship, could you date an 18-year-old? Fuck no. Hell no. Like I, I have, because, like, I am at university, right? I've had conversations with 18-year-olds. Do you know what they made me realize? The kids. They're still kids. They're still kids. A, they're still kids, and B, I haven't been at high school in fucking eight goddamn years. When kids yeah. are talking about, oh, man, going to class stuff, that's not something I relate to anymore, right? Nope. That isn't something that, like, I, as an adult who works, you know, researches, blah, 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 I don't relate to that at all. And that is something that, like, I will... And you know what? There's people who have common interests. I get it, right? Like, I'm not going to throw down judgment on people who are dating in age gaps apart from that one dude who dated my friend, right? <laughs> 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 Fuck that guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But th- my, more, my point is... Is that like these are the questions that you can deal with, and that is the problem we hear is what interests do Sayu and Yoshida share? None. Like that's that's the thing that sort of gets me. Yoshida and Sayu, the reason I enjoyed this anime as much as I did, because I did enjoy it despite my my criticisms of it, is because while the author was a bit wishy-washy with it at the same time because it wasn't like overpowering like some anime are like gate last week for example or last fortnight where we talked about sugawara and the little kid from the alternate universe um they are a completely inappropriate couple and like this is really problematic and all that jazz but it's overt it's very overtly romantic there's no dissuading them it's 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 disgusting right it's not i have a thought-provoking question i want to ask you and i'm floating it to the audience as well here okay yeah go how many manga anime TV shows, etc. How many of those couples do you ship because, not because they have chemistry, not because they have common interests, but because they spend the most time together? How many people who watch Higehiro are shipping Sayu and Yoshida, not because they have chemistry as a romantic pairing or like common interests or ev- even anything in common, but because they spend time together? I think that's actually a good point. Like, because you'll have, like, all the major shipping fandoms do that. You're right. A lot of major shipping fandoms, like, um, the old, uh, the old meme you see, like, you're like Sakura, you useless, right? Mm. Like, like, Naruto and Hinata, I'm not even a Naruto fan, but even I know that Naruto and Hinata were a thing because they had chemistry they were great together they had Similar an emotional interests. connection <laughs> and i'm not even a naruto fan and i've seen bits and pieces of naruto and i and i've learned the lore from knowing this guy so you know it i was a super it, fan back in the day uh it 
Naruto and Hinata make sense to me, but the but the overwhelming majority is Naruto and Sa- and um Naruto and Sasuke and, and Naruto and Sakura. Uh, 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 yeah, why? Because they're the main trio and they've got to get together. It's like the Harry and Hermione ship from Harry Potter. It's like, no, absolutely not. Like, romantically, admittedly, I don't think even like admittedly. I, and I think it's because I think uh, okay, let's okay, we're just gonna get completely off track. We're not, not going to get into okay. It. I am actually going to throw down here. If you watched the Harry Potter movies and you shipped Harry and Hermione, I completely fucking understand it. If you what if you read the books and did it, you're a dummy. No. You're a dummy. No. Yeah, no you're way. a dummy. Like, like Hermione and Ro- like Dad and I, when the first movies came out, like even as a little kid. Both Dad and I shipped Ron and Hermione straight out the gate because Harry and Hermione, like, no, right? Like, it, it just doesn't work. Like, the brother-sister thing, it really was a brother-sister thing. Like, there's no way. Whereas Harry and Ginny made absolute sense because Ginny is like Harry, right? So, it, so and then when you transpose that into this anime, like, the problem is, it re- besides the assholes and her big brother... And her be- and his best and Yoshida's best mate, right? There are no men in this show. There are no romantic or alternate interests for Sayu. There are no friends. Like, like even the. So like okay, I'm gonna quickly put this up against another show that I've watched to give a like contrasting example of this, right? And it's an age gap, so it actually works quite well. Uh, in the show Nijiro Days. There is a couple in that that do have a slight age gap. I think it's about two to three. I think it's two years. She just joins high school as he goes into his last year. So, yeah, two years, right? Yep. In that, while in the building up stage of the romance, there is a romantic rival for him. There is, in the other characters in the story, there are romantic rivals for them. This show... Yoshida is a hardcore insert, right? Let's be let's be completely honest. He's got a harem. All he has the a girls harem. in this show like him. He has a harem, and despite being like, you know, he's like a stereotypical self-insert character, right? He works hard, he's a nice person, and he doesn't do anything particularly objectionable, right? And yeah. yet, girls fucking flock to this man. And yes, you can be like, well, Sayu changed his course of actions and stuff. But like, look. Look. When he shaved, it barely changed anything about him. That is a fundamental problem I have with this show. <laughs> yeah, it, look. it lied to me. He didn't have a scraggly beard. He had a little bit of stubble. A little bit of stubble. Ask our, ask our mate if he here who is what we in Australia would call the wog. Ask him about facial hair and he'll tell you. Like I this shaved would... and I've never felt worse in my life. <laughs> yeah, this, no. show, this show lied to me. I shaved like two <laughs> weeks ago and my girlfriend was like, please don't show up until you've grown your beard back. <laughs> right, exactly. I have a beard and I'd feel naked without it. Like it's I did just... feel naked without it. I haven't had my <laughs> face bare since like 2000 and I think 16. You notice when you get like a, when you when you get a shave and it's like winter, your face gets cold? Like, no, uh, absolutely. The, the way the air flows over your face is right. Look, oh, we're getting, <laughs> this, we're getting is not, this is like, real, this is irrelevant. Like, but like, but, look, the problem is that this show, like many other shows, cannot let there be anything in the way of Yoshida. Right? The biggest obstacle Yoshida faces in the entire thirteen episodes is a a R word, who then gets weirdly like reconciled, and B, Sayu's mother, right? Yeah. He doesn't have boys Sayu's age really competing with him. Yeah, and not only that, like, let's be real here. The only romance, like, Spunky Kohai um, tries to put her moves on the big man, Yoshida, and it doesn't work because he's not interested in her. He's he, And the thing is, this is the thing that gets me, right? Yoshida is again doing the right thing because there is one rule in workplaces don't date your subordinates <laughs> for Christ's sake don't date your boss would be the second one yeah and he's and that's the thing he wants to date his boss because he likes older <laughs> women and Goto openly says she likes him later on 
but originally rejects him because women are always playing head games and she wants to play cat and mouse with him to make him chase her but like yoshida's like just say yes you bitch like i like you you like me let's get this done let's get it on right let's let's go let's make this happen and goto is fully aware of what she's doing and it's revealed later that she's a virgin and which first off bullshit it, like, look, look, okay, okay. I, I can believe a lot of things, but, like... It, it's one what? of those things that fucks me off fundamentally with a lot of this kind of stuff. And let's be real, it's, like, again, it's fan service. Because it's the same reason that when you play a vision novel that's, like, in, like, adult, like, game, they're like, oh, no, they're all, ver they're all virgins. It's like, that doesn't make a fucking lick of sense. No, Yo it's very clearly implied because Sayu finds Yoshida's yearbook, and there's a really, it's a really cute scene. I love it to bits. Yeah, that, like, and again, that character got completely cut from the story. I quite like. Yeah, it she much. should, she should have been in it. But like, like that that scene where she's going, th where Sayu's going through his yearbook, and Yoshida's laughing with her about it, and then Yo and then Sayu and Yoshida have a familial moment. There's no fan service, no nothing. They're literally little sister and big brother slash parent right just giving each other shit back and forth it's one of my favorite scenes in the anime right yeah but but it's very clearly implied that he had a relationship in high school and she was obviously very she's like goto she's a bit older she's a bit wiser she she's a bit scrappy he's like that too he's athletic and good looking in high school because he's on the track team and all Can that I just say so, how like that shit annoyed the fuck out of me like Point is, Yoshida's fucked. No, 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 like, that's what I mean. <laughs> like, Yoshida, like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, Yoshida is definitely not a virgin, so yeah, fuck that. Fuck that, fuck that, fuck, fuck that virgin shit. Like, this whole thing about, oh, you know, they've got to be virgins, otherwise it's not real love, and blah, 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 Bullshit. blah. Like, fuck off. Go like, read Megaros, it's not Megaros' son's first time. That wet series is fucking banging. Uh, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but, like, like, but my point more here is, A... Yes, you have let Yoshida fucked, which is a nice change. But more importantly is the fact that, um, why does our protagonist have to be such, like, a wet blanket? Like, Yoshida's got, like, this history of, like, being a sportsman and stuff. I, I get that this is, like, a, this, this is partially because of, like, the Japanese work-life balance thing. But I would just love to see a character who like this, who has a history as, like, an athletic dude. And all I can think of is Watakoi and one of the dude's characters from that, who is a former sportsman. And he reflects that in the way he is, even as, like, a professional work guy. He's very professional, but he still has that spark to him, right? Yoshida, on the other hand, is just, like... I watched 13 episodes, and I don't know anything. I feel like I still don't know anything about him, right? Okay. Like, yeah, I mean, you're right. But, okay, so I'm rereading Chainsaw Man right now. <laughs> and I know what Denji likes. Denji likes to eat food. He likes to... And th th okay, that seems like a really minor thing, but in the context, it makes sense. Denji likes to eat food. He wants to have sex. And he wants to, you know, like, be loved, right? Like, he wants to actually experience these things. In contrast here... I don't think we even get that much from, like, Yoshida. Like, we see that, like, oh, Sayu's changed my life. And it's like, okay, she made you clean up your act a bit and get your shit together. But you're still empty in that regard, right? Like, did you find a new hobby? Did you... Yeah. Like, do you have anything outside of this? Like, with... And I was like, that's the thing... I think it would have made for an excellent, like, <laughs> a horrible ending to the series. Like, it would have pissed off so many people, but I would have been so down for it that, like, Yoshida just slips back into the negative, like, patterns of behavior straight after Sayu leaves and end on that note. End on show his apartment full of trash, show him just back to being a dropkick. That would have been so fucking funny. It would have killed me. Yeah, and... it would have been funny, and it would have pissed everyone off, but that's actually one of the scenes in the anime that I absolutely adored, and I, I will talk about, like, that, but, like, what really gets me about this whole thing about Yoshida as a character is I really like him, and I really like his relationship with Sayu, 
but it's because they're written that way right it's it and i know that's a very stupid thing like of course they're written that way they're characters but you're you're right yoshida doesn't feel as organic as sayu or even goto does like i find goto being a virgin that whole point like oh i was too hot so all the boys were intimidated by me like, i'm sorry no like we've all met women like goto in our lives and, like i think that I and think they that... have all been they have all fucked like I'm and sorry. i think i think they're a more interesting narrative here because of the relationship with sex that this show has I think it would have been really interesting to contrast a consensual, a person who consensually seeks out sex against the non-consensual aspect of Sayu's relationships, right? Yeah, that's what I was hoping for with Goto because I was like, look. You know, like teaching her to have a healthy relationship with intimacy in a way that's not exploitative, right? And creepy as fuck. Yeah, exactly. And that is a that is what good writing looks like to me right yeah and i'll give him points one of the big things i was excited for going into this show was after finding about her backstory it made me very uncomfortable and very angry at what happened to sayu which is good it's what the writing is supposed to do but like i really at the same time in a weird obtuse and horrible way for lack of a better term I really appreciated the fact that the teenage girl, the teenage runaway, runaway that he's taken in, and Sayu as a girl, as a teenage girl in Japan, in anime, has had sex. She's not the pure uwu virgin high school girl that we see in every other anime ever. She has seen some shit. She knows a thing or two because she's seen a thing or two, right? Yeah. And she's been in this shitty situation, and now she's here. And she was so much more interesting because of that. And it should be really highlighted at this point. I think it's really important for us to talk about is the discourse that was in the fandom around when this was airing. Obviously, Pac was a bit tuned out of this. The discourse around Sayu being a so-called slut, right? Oh, first dude, of all, first I'm lucky of... I wasn't involved. I would have started a fight. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> fuck you. Um, secondly, <laughs> secondly. I think this really shows the sort of toxic relationship that a lot of people have with sex, right? Especially because this is clearly non-consensual. Even though I have problems with the framing and the way that we depict sex in the show and that it's often sexualized, even though it's shown as being, like, non-consensual. Like, it's not something Sayu wants. It's something Sayu has to do to survive. And that fucks me off, but, but that's not what I'm trying to get at here is that when we see this, it's shown that, like, Sayu is not enjoying this. This isn't a good thing. And the fact that people act like, oh, no, she's just, like, throwing it out for anyone is ignorant. And it shows that, like, there's so much more that needs to be done to talk about these things in a mature way. And we try. We do try. We try to, we try to bring you a little bit of a more mature take, even though we're both, like, idiots who re- regularly like fall into the gutter right okay yeah but i'm gonna come out here this is uh this is a filthy lefty podcast so we're gonna say it loudly and clearly clearly rather for everyone who's listening while we may not approve of it as a as a business in terms of partaking it uh sex work is real work and you unionize and support sex workers <laughs> because they are doing this to live and so is Sayu. It doesn't invalidate her as a person, and it doesn't color her morality or her personality as a whole. Anyone who thinks that about sex workers, or even even the OnlyFans e-girl crazes happen, anyone who thinks that about them, you need to check yourself and stay in your fucking lane. And if any of you have got a problem, you can BTFO, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like, like, that's me on my soapbox here. I... Do not partake in the activities of these young women, but at the same time, I know a lot of them um, in my travels because I used to work in communications and I also worked in hospitality. So I knew a lot of them and I can tell you, okay, like, they work hard. So don't you dare invalidate them or cite you. Okay, <laughs> we will fight. We will fight. So, so, <coughs> oh shit. <coughs> We've been going on for a while. We should probably move on because your voice is not going to last much longer. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Okay, so 
just quickly, I'd like to bring up a similar show that aired, uh, let's see, was it in the same season? Um, two seconds, spring 2021... Spring 2021. Yep, same season. Okay, so it's important to highlight that Higahiro wasn't the only one to air the only age gap with an adult and a teenager in that season. There was another show uh, called uh, Koi to Yobo, Yob, uh, Koi to Yobo ni wa Kimochi Wari, which is It's Too Sick to Call This Love, or Koi Kimo. Never heard of it. I'm going to quickly just give a gist of it because the or- the audience might not be aware of it. Pac-Man's clearly not aware of it. So here we go. People fall in love in the most mysterious of ways. The statement seems to be especially true for the affluent genius playboy, Ryo uh, Amakusa. When he nearly falls off the stairs one rainy morning, a girl named Ichika uh, Arima saves him. As if by fate, Ryo, Ryo encounters Ichika again later that night. She happens to be the best, end of- best friend of his little sister, Ryo. Wanting to thank her... Ryo attempts to woo Ichika by employing his usual flirtatious te- tactics, only to be immediately shot down, his target creeped out by his behaviour. Rather than being discouraged, Ryo becomes more enthralled with her and begins to do everything he can to steal Ichika's heart, despite receiving disgusted reactions each time. However, as time passes by, will Ichika remain repulsed by Ryo's creepy yet dedicated advances? Now, this was in the same season. That's and- fucked up. That is fucked up. I hate Koi Kimo, um, and I wanted to bring it up because of the contrast against Higehiro. Higehiro, while missing the mark a lot of the time from my perspective, and obviously like a little bit from yours, does not go that far with an uh, adult actively pursuing a minor. And I want to point that out because as disgusted as I am by this, there is worse ways to do this, right? Yeah. And as many moral, like, objections as I had to this, like I said, there's a story here that I liked. I like the way that we did the family stuff. Like, I love family stories, and this was the best part of the show, is the family aspects of it. Um, man, is, uh, yeah, you're right, I am starting to lose my voice. Um, in that case, uh, I'd like to just do a quick, again, rundown through characters, just oh, because I was going to mention it, because we haven't talked about Best Girl yet. So... I think, like, doing episodes and stuff is pretty pointless, but, um, so I'd like it us is, to at least do a highlight on characters. Like, it's, 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 look, the episode structure is pretty straightforward. It's your standard slice of life family show where a new family comes together because of circumstances. If you've yeah. seen shows like Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, like, they don't move into a new apartment, but they have to organize clothes and food for Sayu. So they go up, they have an episode on that. They yeah. have an episode where Sayu needs to get a part-time job. They have an episode where he needs to get her a phone so he can stay in touch with her. And there's a family emergency and he needs to get, get a hold of her and rescue her from a bad situation. Um, her past gets revealed and all that. She learns how to cook. There's a summer festival episode. It's all standard slice of lifey stuff, but it's good slice of lifey stuff. And it has a point, unlike most slice of life do. But yeah, characters. And we haven't talked about Best Girl yet. And you know exactly okay. who I'm talking so about. So we've obviously talked at length about Sayu and we've talked at length about Yoshida and our feelings on the both of them. So I feel like we and don't need to like really go back into that. The, the, those two, we, I think we've litigated enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so obviously, as we've mentioned, this cast is exceptionally heavy on women presence. Um, yep. So the three other supporting women in the cast are Goto Ayeri, uh, Mishima, Yuzaha and Yuki Asami. Uh, AKA you love, Best Girl. You love Goto, so I'll let you take it away. Give us the explanation of the general gist of Goto's character. Goto is... Um, excuse me, can I get the siren? Because it's a MILF alert. I was going to say horny Damn. alert, but that works too. Damn. <laughs> horny alert. Mil- Goto is... Mwah. She's the only appropriate ship. For Yoshida in this show. Okay, I thought you were going to say the only appropriate, like, uh, person to, like, fantasize about. And I was like, Yuzaha's fine. She's an adult. No, Yuzaha's fine. She's an adult too. But, like, honestly, no. Like, this is the canon ship for me. Purely because they both like each other. Yoshida likes her. She likes him. They've obviously got a thing going on. She's playing hard to get. When Sayu shows up and he starts cleaning up his act, she gets nervous and starts making her move. Um, which leads to a dramatic moment between the two of them, which is great. I love that scene. But the moment is Goto becomes a really good friend to Sayu and looks after her and really likes Yoshida. 
and so I like Goto. I I wish he was the cannon ship a hundred percent, and that Sayu becomes their adopted daughter slash roommate later down the track. That was what I was going. I was hoping for. Didn't get it, but I like her dynamic. You can then you can you can like you can delude yourself enough to thinking that the true ending is him and Goto together. Yeah, and that's what I'm. I'm gonna sit there with my delusion and sit and pretend. Um, I, I'm but, gonna play pretend. I'm gonna play but, dolls. But um. Just going to point this out. While I love her as the character, and she's my favorite of the women, quotation mark, um, she's not best girl in this anime. No, she is not. Uh, but we do disagree on best girl. But, okay, look. I'm going to be blunt. The characters here are flat. Like, we've covered flat yeah. characters to death because there's a lot of them. The only but... one with real depth here is Sayu. Everyone even, else is. And even Sayu is, like, she's less shallow than the other characters but like her character is only fleshed out in like ways of like her trauma and that's something that like so many characters that we encounter time and time again are characters who are not actually deep they're deep in the sense that they actually i'm lying i would say that honestly where I don't want to skip Kohai, but I'm going to because it let look, me to look. Look, okay. On. I will summarize everything you need to know about Kohai. Yuzuha Mishima is the Kohai of Yoshida. She's his junior. She works under him, and she is very forceful with their relationship to the point that even Goto like steps out to warn her that she's being like too much, too much. Right? She's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, she's pushing it. Um, and I don't dislike a for a character who's like willing to fight, right? Too often I see these girls who are in these sort of like, you know, romantic trios, romantic like harems, blah, blah, blah. And all they do is sort of like wait around for the main character to notice them and nothing ever happens, right? I like that she actively confesses to him, right? That's a nice touch. Um, but that's it. That's all there is to her character. And that's the same thing with Gotho. Like Gotho is, she's there. And the she's defined by like her breast size and that she likes yoshida right there's yeah. so uh, this, uh, and this brings us to yuki asami aka the senior at the uh market the uh, supermarket that i use part-time job and my official nomination for best girl of the show even better than sayu and she... what i will give yuki asami is her personality. Her personality is really funny. I love the slang she uses. I love the way she talks. She's a very fun character. And, and while she doesn't have a whole lot of like character outside of it, she has a personality. And this is important because I've mentioned it before, but I'll say it again, is personality can carry a character who isn't particularly given much depth. And right? I would disagree with you. Actually, I think of all the side characters, like Sayu gets depth um yoshida is kind of a good dude that's his character but sayu gets depth she gets the most depth out of the characters second in depth and even then not by a little not by a little bit like it's literally microns as you say sayu's depth comes from her trauma and her experience and the fact that she's the focal point of the show in terms of characters who actually get depth i think that asami here mm -hmm. gets more depth than yoshida and the reason oh, no, is simple. absolutely because her relationship with Sayu is one of my favorite things in a show because they become bros, like or sisters, like they yeah. they are sisters, like straight out the gate. Well, it's like, an it's an anago, like it's an anago relationship, like an older yeah. sister. Yeah, and like, but the thing is, Asami as a character, unlike all the other characters in the show, all the other characters, even Sayu, are all like uh, it's all based around their relationship to Yoshida and their relationships in with each other. And the progress of the situation. Asami is the only one of all of the characters, including the two pro tags, that actually has, quote, a life. She yeah. has parents. She has parents who are distant because they work, they work. So she started dressing like a guy to get the parents' attention. They get mad. So she starts doing her combini job as a part-timer and living her life the way she wants to. She wants to be an author. She has hobbies. She has dreams. She's got things she wants to do. She does things around the place. When she's not with Sayu working at the Konbini, she's hanging out in different places. You know, like, uh, uh, she is a person. 
all the other people in this show are characters to drive a narrative. And while it's perfectly fine, Asami is the only one in the whole show who has who is a person who just happens to be in this story, right? She's the only one of them who's an actual person who's here to do things. Yeah. Like and and that's why I think she's best girl because she uncharacteristic like un uncharacteristically, no, very characteristically, but like no category, no ca- uncategorically. She doesn't give a shit. Like she goes into bat for Sayu straight out the gate. Doesn't care. She was ready to fight Yoshida if he was a bad dude. Right? Yeah. And she would have won too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, Yoshida doesn't seem like the most competent guy in a fight. <laughs> if if he doesn't kick a if he doesn't kick an R word off his family member, I don't think Yeah. He, I don't think he's ever gotten in a fight, to be honest. So um, like if you're not gonna fight on that, when are you? But anyway. Yeah. Um Honestly, I think we've pretty much captured everything there is to say. We've discoursed, we've characterized i don't think there's a whole lot else i have left to say and i don't think my voice is going to hold out much longer yeah so shall we the get only to other, the only other thing we could talk about is the animation it's a katakawa production and they put money behind it it's gorgeous the show looks fantastic animation's great it's got the budget as they say i don't really have anything to say about the animation other than it's good do you really yeah, there's not a whole lot to say else other than that is there no, really, it, it is it has got a budget, it's done by a good studio, uh, and the animation team did an outstanding job as they always do. Um with Kat- Katakawa Productions, I hate them for their copyright laws and their constant bullying of creators trying to cover their work. So it was done by three production studios, Pony Canyon, Magic Capsule, and Dream Shift, and they did a fine job. Yeah, like... and Pony Can- Bo- Pony Canyon collaborated with Kyoto animation for Violet Evergarden, which is why their eyes and their facial features are so excellently done, is because Pony Canyon specialize in that. I know they do. So look, excellent. The soundtrack, the fact that I can't even think of it means that it's done its job. But like the opening, the ending, and the background music are just sort of there. They don't stand out. Did they stand out to you? Um, I mean, the opening is fine. It's, it's look, it's just slice of life, like soundtracking. Like, there isn't the opening is meh. the ending is actually better than the opening, I'd say. Yeah, I agree. Um, weird choice to put it at the ending of this, but but, but the fact is that it's um, an off, like the, the fact en- that the, the actual opening, the opening animation is pretty middling, it's just a usual character slides. With a All few, I'm saying you know, is, and the about the only interesting thing is that it gives away the plot point about the like from the get go if you're paying attention. God um, damn it! Ah, he... oh, damn. Yep. Okay. The unalive plot. Yep. The unalive <laughs> plot um is obviously alluded to in the in the uh, opening, and apart from that, that's pretty much all there is to say on that matter. There's nothing. Yeah. In, don't like look, this isn't don't... like this isn't a thing where you're like. Oh wow! This really did something. It's just don't, there. don't expect don't expect Kiawani level opening quality here. It's just not gonna like slice of life shows have a bad reputation, and Kiawani is the only studio I've seen that actually somehow manages to I get mean, decent openings for their slice of life. There's some decent uh, like PA works and stuff have done some good stuff, you know. Yeah, uh, but 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 choo choo. Yeah, this ain't quite frankly. Like, Choo Choo Yeah or Nichi Joe's opening, this isn't, right? So, like, I can't really sort of... Yes, I'm using this as an excuse to stand Kiani and I will die on this. I'll die on this hill. But, yeah. Um... Really? Like, okay, I guess we should sum up, huh? Scores yeah. and all that jazz. Uh, yeah. I'm going to take the lead for once. Um, I'm pretty straightforward. I've made it pretty clear. I have my criticisms of a lot of the stuff here. Um, I'm going to give the story a 57 out of 100. Uh, I'm going to give the characters a 43, although I, yeah, I'll give them a 43. I'm giving the visuals a 65. This was unobjectionable. It was solid animation, like decent visuals, well-structured. Uh, and I'm giving my personal enjoyment a 41. I really struggled with this one. Like, especially the last few episodes, I was just like, yeah, let's get through it. 
Um, that gives me an overall score of 51 out of 100. This is going to be the biggest differential we've had on this podcast. <laughs> and that's including all of the sort of gratuitous fan service and stuff that I've sort of given a personal enjoyment score that's ridiculous and then docked points off for, for the quality, right? Um, which I don't count those differentials because quite frankly, personal enjoyment is the big, is the big factor. Um, but here's the thing. While I agree with Ivy on a lot of things, I also disagree. Even though I've sort of gone along with a lot of what he said and I agree with it, it's, at the same time, I don't think it's as bad as my colleague here says in terms of like the writing and the character. Like I can see where his criticisms are coming for, but I don't think they're as bad as he says. Honestly, throughout the whole show, while there was that underlying tension, I did not feel that Sayu was being overly sexualized to a, to an egregious extent. I also don't think that the relationship between the two um, at any stage felt anything seriously. I felt that instead of... This may have been because the anime, the anime adaption team did a better job in that the relationship between Sayu and Yoshida felt predominantly familial 99% of the time and the sexual tension aspect was simply a case from Sayu's perspective and the fact that she had received the treatment she had and she developed those feelings naturally because of the situation she was in and that Yoshida was being the bigger man and doing the right thing, right? And their familial relationship, like them being family, it led to one of my favorite scenes in the whole show where the spunky Kohai uh, ran into Sayu who was running from her brother who's trying to take her back to her mum in Hokkaido they end up in a karaoke bar and Sayu and Yuzahate have a really long and deep conversation about uh, Sayu's relationship with Yoshida and what her plans for the future are and how desperate a situation she's actually in. And she needs to confront that just as she's confronted Yoshida with her feelings, right? She needs to get it all out. And it's followed by a scene where Yoshida picks up Sayu from the karaoke bar to take her home because she calls Yoshida's apartment home now, because that's what it is, her first real home, and that hits to me. But it's the exchange between Yoshida and Sayu in that in that particular part, where they're talking like a family. It's like, it's not the same dynamic, obviously, because two big burly men. Um, but it's like it's similar to the way I would talk to my dad um, if I pick him up from the shops or something. Like, what did you get? Did you get food? Oh, come on, don't be a dickhead. Move over. Did you get what I asked for? Yeah, of course. Did you get this? Oh, I don't know great grab that it's gonna get cold otherwise like they're just bantering back and forth and it's obviously that they love each other they're family now and the moment the door closes and they leave user hub breaks down because she's asking why doesn't he love me like that he never looks at me the way he looks at sayu and goto he doesn't he doesn't really emotionally care about me but if sayu is involved he will go to the end of the earth to protect her and it's that familial relationship for me and above all, despite everything, despite everything that I've complained about in this show, when it came to it in the last two episodes, I found myself screaming at my screen at, y at Yoshida, tell her you'll miss her. Tell her you don't want to go, but you have to because it's the right thing. Be honest to, it, to her and yourself. And he plays it cool. No, I'm going to do it all for best. It's going to be best for Sayu. I'm going to be honest with her. Look. I'm going to make sure she has a happy life and finishes school and everything's going to be fine. And then he goes home and the moment he goes home, he sits down and reads the recipes for miso soup and tries to make it himself and it's just not the same as when Sayu made it and he cries himself to sleep. right? Because he misses her. The fact that this anime, despite all our criticisms, managed to get me emotionally involved enough where I... I was crying there with him. I'll be blunt. I was upset for him too. Because I was like, man, when you get back home, you're going to miss her so terribly. I can imagine being in his situation. I'd be fucking devastated. Like your best friend has moved out. She was, she was family to you. She's left. You no longer have a big part of your life. You're living on your own again. There's no one to greet you when you wake up. It's all gone. Like it's not even a sexual relationship. As we said, it's just family. Like, 
you're in a house by yourself again after all that time like that would drive me crazy if my dad god forbid dropped dead or something tomorrow and i had to wake up in an empty house every day i'd go mad right so because of that emotional resonance that it hit me with i have to give it a nine i'm giving it a nine because of all the shows we've watched this is the first one that has hit me where i live and has hit me hard and said hey you care about these people and all the other shows we've watched every single one i've been interested i've been entertained i've been amused but this is the first time i've actually cared and so I have to give it a 9 out of 10. Because when you... when you, It's not a masterpiece by any means. We've shat on it too much to be a masterpiece. But if you can get me to care like that, you've, you've won, in my opinion. So, for the first time ever, we have a four-point difference between Ibby's rating and mine. One day, one day, we're going to watch something so terrible and I will give it a 1. And you will give it a 10 out of spite. And we will yeah, truly one day. explode. But I think it's my turn to roll, isn't it? Uh, honestly, go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, at this point, I'm not even phased about going back and forth. I just want to roll and just see what we get next, to be honest. Yeah, I, that's one of the biggest the biggest motivators. It's what I love doing this podcast for, is the biggest motivator for me is, like, every time we finish an anime, I'm like, can we finish this anime so we can roll something different? Yeah, like, it's it just just a just a little bit of like behind the curtain work for the audience here. Uh, it's not uncommon for one of us to just like we'll just randomly roll stuff like during the week. We'll be like ch chatting and we'll be like, "Oh, I roll something. See how luck is going with me today." And then we complain when we get something good that we wish we could watch for the show, but we've done this off air, so there's no proof that we <laughs> rolled it, so we can't do it. And that is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for the benefit of the audience, goddamn, Ivy's getting tired. We better roll this quick. So I'm going to stream my screen for old Ivy here. Yes, sir. So he can verify, trust but verify, yep. as they say. Yep, the I, am, I am the trusting faction. Okay, yep. so no G-rated anime because we're not going to watch Ponyo. But everything else... Um... <laughs> I, I had to stop myself. I've done it before on the podcast and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep singing the Ponyo song every time you bring up <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Just yep. let, me, let me fucking watch Ponyo, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, from PG to MA all the way up because um, we're not watching the dreaded uh, spicy cultural anime on this podcast. Although one day, one day we might do it for the memes, but not today. Um, oh man, that'll be a that'll be a nightmare for me. Because <laughs> you don't watch the uh, cultured anime, do you? Not anymore. I'm too old for that. You uh, read cultured anime though. Don't I, uh, I, 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 yeah. Let's not get into the the absolute <laughs> shit I put myself through. Let's not let's not get bogged down with which cultured anime we read. But if you all guys, right. just a pro tip for all y'all, Korean cultured manga is where it's at, my guys. <laughs> Korean cultured all manga right. is where it's at. Let's get anyway, this roll. we gotta. We're good. Let's get this roll. Yep, let's All right. go. Generate that motherfucking list. Yep, we're all good on settings. We're all good, and single anime, here we go. Oh ho ho ho! Oh. Have we got a magical girl show? Fushigi na, na Somera-chan. Magical Somera-chan. The, this story follows the everyday life of Samara Nan Nonomoto, who can use the strongest Kenpo, Nonomoto Mahoken, which is inherited from her mother with her younger sister, Kukuru. It oh is a... Oh, look. It's a, it is a uh, four panel. We're going to have to roll again. Episode... Dra no, episode duration, five minutes. That's a weird one. So that's, it's a clip show. Okay, it's in weird. that case, I'm going to roll. Okay, so you stream um, your screen. Let's see. Yep, 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 yep. yep so we're yep. gonna have to roll again because I can't be. I because quite honestly, we're using executive privilege. I don't want to watch this, and it's only five, five minutes, so we're gonna roll again. We're gonna cheat a little bit. Hold on, let me get my screen up. Okay, so let's. So we're gonna roll so again, and maybe we should set the episode yeah, yeah, yeah. duration for like at least thirty minutes. Um, in the uh, so we're watch we're gonna watch the Magic Girl one. Yep, definitely watching that. Yep, okay. We'll watch it. Um, because of that, I think we're fine. Um, let's see. Duration. We don't have duration as an option, so nope. Unfortunately, you don't. Okay. Uh, generate um, random. 
Uh, yep. I need to yep. watch your stream, don't I? So... Yes, you do. Okay, generate single random anime. Bang. Yes. Oh, yes. yo! No yes. way! Yes. Thank you. Thank you, universe. We get to watch. Okay. <laughs> we have rolled Rakudai Kishi no Cavalry or Chivalry of a Failed Knight, aka the anime that came out and I watched it as it was airing. But Pac-Man has never seen it. I have not watched it in years. I am perfectly happy to make the Magic Girl series a like flourish for us to go into this show, which is a lot of fun and has some genuinely pretty cool scenes. For a guy who spent the past hour and a half complaining about fan service, I've seen this series like <laughs> this, this is an etchy show. And yep. not only that, oh my god, we've got a unicorn, ladies and gentlemen, and an etchy show that Ivy actually likes. It's true. Oh my god, it's true. Crazy. It's true. Crazy. And like I will have my criticisms, but the thing is, is that this aired in a season where there was an almost identical show. Uh the Astro Score. And this did it better. And the fact that you have two shows that can go against each other, man, this stood out. And that was hard because this was in a period where battle harems were the thing where like everything was like, oh, it's a school, there's battles and there's a harem. And it's like, what? And that was such a popular, oh man, Anti-Magic Academy also came out around that time. And while I do like the light novel for that, again, etchy, um... The uh, show was dreadful. Fuck you, Silverlink. I will never forgive you. Um, so that's that's our roles, folks. We've if got Sinemo, Sinemo Chan, and Rakudai Kishi no Cavalry. Look forward to it because this is going to be a fun one. The idea, the fucking idea. There will never be a day where Ivy forgives. Silverlink, folks, it's never going to happen. No Silver matter Link how many good things, man. Silverlink, so, no matter how many times Silverlink puts something good out, I will always be like, I hear you, but you turned this reasonable show into a worse show. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, so not gonna, I'm not going to be out here and be like, Anti-Magic Academy was some secret hidden gem, but the way they, they did it dirty, man, they did it dirty. Oh, man, I'm about to drop so Alrighty. let's say our goodbyes you can as always find us on spotify you can find us on anywhere you can get your podcast apart from apple because i'm not dealing with that still not dealing with that um you can find us here at anamaki where we will always be first and then well yeah you know yeah if we get big enough we'll probably start our own podcast channel on youtube to be honest with you but yeah you know. for now we're comfy we're here will always be with you i am the co-host v and i am very very tired i'm pac-man love and life uh <laughs> we will see you next time uh hit the music remember to subscribe i tend to lose subscribers whenever i release these episodes so <laughs> maybe maybe one day we'll have a positive subscriber rate on these podcast episodes anyway guys we'll see you later see you on the flip side god damn Sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the dealing's done, you gotta go.